the Orioles, the Cal Ripken um, Foundation helps us with badges in baseball where we can interact with kids on a positive level. And, you know, I've heard so many times when I'm hiring police officers or even individuals in the community that they, when they met a police officer in their youth, it was somebody they looked up to and admired, and they wanted to be just like them. So we hope we can do that with the Sarasota Police Department, with um, with all kids of all ages. And, and all actually, genders. All, uh, everybody. And yeah. we, we hope, we actually realize we need to start really young. We're going to the kindergarten, um, uh, elementary school ages, and we've got a lot of groups that help us engage with young people. We give out stockings to the middle school at Christmas time, and we partner with the Housing Authority to go shopping at Target to buy Christmas gifts for um, uh, the kids and it's amazing when you see the generosity of our officers mm-hmm. but also the hearts of the kids and uh, and just uh, with how you start out where the kids sometimes are a little tentative around the you know uniform police officer but only after a couple of minutes you see it's like they're lifelong friends and have such a good time shopping right. and the kids are so generous they want to buy gifts for their mom or their brothers and sisters and not just for themselves and it's just you know doing that is such a positive, purposeful thing we do in law enforcement that a lot of people don't get to see. Um, and that's what why we do this job is to try to make people's lives better. You know, And I tell our officers, every day you can make a positive difference in somebody's life. And that's a lot of power. Not that you can arrest them and take away their freedom. Not that you can actually shoot them. And we have the authority to, to kill people under um, uh, specific circumstances. And, and But that's not the greatest power we have as police. It's mm-hmm. to influence people, to try to make the world a better place. And that's so important to me. It's important to my family. It's mm-hmm. been since my grandfather, my dad, me, my daughter, we all espouse to that, you know. Yeah, right. And it's so true. And it's so true. I, I see um, bumper stickers every once in a while, and it says, all lives matter. And then I see bumper stickers, too, that say, blue lives matter which is our law enforcement and our first responders. Well, that, it's a great thing. We appreciate that. And I will tell you, it is, we believe all lives um, count, everybody. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter how much money you have, where you live, what your job is, the color of your skin, what religion you practice. It doesn't matter to us. And we want people to know that we're there to help them mm-hmm. and, um, and, again, to keep them safe. And, um, and I just want to share a, a cute story with you because it's how things pass on from generation. Um, uh, it, Halloween's getting ready to come up and you'll see our police officers will be out in the community handing out candy to, to kids and uh, we do that as a positive way to interact with the kids and who can pass up a, you know candy, free right. candy from police officers <laughs> and they, even even some of the bigger kids they come around the house with um, uh, pillowcases yes, they <laughs> and they're do. You know, 12, 13, 15 years old, we yeah. love to see them too they, they do, it's all and, good uh, my daughter was working as a Baltimore County officer and uh, she had her hat out with all the candy in the hat and the kids were all gathered around her um her police car and they were taking candy out of the hat and she was in a a, a lower income area and uh, there wasn't always a lot of trust with the police in that area and she was trying to build up those relationships and when the parents saw the kids all around the police car their first assumption was that she was there to try to get the kids in trouble or do something and and you know and and they were yelling what are you doing to my daughter what are you doing to my son and the kids were turning around like, the officer's giving us candy and she was like i'm just giving them candy for halloween and they were like oh my god you're the best police officer in the world <laughs> and they nicknamed her candy cop and Aww. uh which is so cute because it was just a way to engage with kids and families and if you if you went over the hearts and minds of the kids and then you went over the hearts and minds of the of the parents and the adults and that's that trust within community, that partnership, um, uh, my boss Tom Barwin likes to call it partnership policing, um, those relationships actually make the community safer, it makes our police officers safer, and we can engage together to keep crime down and keep our community safe. Right, and I think those are messages that are global. I think they're, mo- they're definitely messages that are nationwide for America that all law enforcement officials probably have in their heart of hearts they aren't always allowed to do exactly what they might want to do but i think those kinds of messages are in the hearts of all first responders and sometimes it's not easy for them to implement the hopes of their heart they have to implement the rules of the procedures and the rules of the community and find that balance is difficult that's a challenge it is it's tough with the um what most people see on television is um they'll see one bad police officer Mm -hmm. and uh and if you imagine even in the past if you guessed in the last five years let's just say since ferguson how many incidents have been controversial incidents involving law enforcement even if you counted all of those compared to how many police officers and law enforcement agencies there are in our society 
it is such a minuscule number of police mm-hmm. officers doing things wrong compared to the large number that are doing things right every single day. But unfortunately, what you see is that one officer on television, and then all officers are painted with a broad stroke right. of stereotype saying, like, all police officers are like that. And what I've seen in my career in almost 30, over 34 years is that police officers are good. There are one or two bad apples. In everything. In every occupation. In every walk of life, there is. are always... Always, I don't care whether it's religious walks of life or political walks of life or social walks of life, education, government, agriculture, real estate, uh, you're going to find a bad apple or two or three or four here and there now and then, but the percentages are going to be very, very Very small. If we we could just remember that. Yeah, we do a lot in our police department to ensure that we have good quality people that have good character. We do really good backgrounds. Our recruiting looks for the best of the best. We make sure we give them the best training. We continue to train our police officers, do good backgrounds, give them good training. We brought in uh, one of the most prestigious fair and impartial uh, instruction classes to our agency. We did it with our command staff and our community together, but now we're doing it the whole entire agency. So we ensure that our officers understand about bias and, and making sure we're being fair and impartial. Um, We give a lot of training to our officers, the best equipment that they can have. We make sure we have good policies. We're an accredited um, agency, so we follow high standards. So as a law enforcement agency, I feel um, confident that we are doing the right things to make sure our officers are following all the rules and doing the right things. And uh, and we we do have good police officers. I'm really proud of the Sarasota police officers and all the work they do and how they give back both, on, like I said, on duty and off duty. Mm-hmm. And, and they're out every single day, 24 hours a day, committed right. to keeping our community and, safe. And your offices work wonderfully with our film commission. We many times have to call and we get permissions to be here, to be there. We're getting permits from different organizations and different entities and so forth. And whenever law enforcement is needed, for whatever reason within the city, there's always a voice that answers the question. There's always a person with a smile in their voice that wants to help. And that is priceless. I mean, that's just invaluable. And we're just one little piece of the economy, one little piece of an industry. I'm imagining that that spreads across everything that touches We do. We're, your pu- police we're public servants, and we right. really take that seriously. And I actually declared this year as the year of service. Um, uh, recognizing people both internally and externally. Um, uh, We make sure that we provide the best service, the good quality service to each other um, within the organization, but also to the community, especially the community outside the organization. We want want people to feel valued and and appreciated um, for what we do, treat people respectfully, and I teach... um, the, the golden rule, actually the platinum rule, treat people better than they expect to be treated. <laughs> so if we do um, uh, the best we can when we're encountering people, and remember that that individual you're dealing with could be your mother, your father, your sister, a family member. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you think about how you would like a police officer to treat your family member and you treat people that way, you're going to use kindness, you're going to use respect. You, you still have to follow the rules and be fair and, right. and sometimes have to arrest people and write them tickets. But there's also an attitude that you have to have about it. And you never want to make people feel anything uh, less than very positive. You don't want to take away their dignity. That's, That's right. It's it, there. We're dealing with human beings. People make mistakes, but it's not up to be us to be the judges and and to to make people not feel good about themselves or not respected. And so it's important to me and our organization. Right. And and every every brick you lay is a solid foundation toward building those relationships, and we sure do appreciate it. Oh, thank you. So, Chief DePino, we've run it out of time, but I wanted to thank you for being here, and if you had one piece of advice to everybody out there, just, you know, some little action they could do or some little attitude they could have, off the top of your head, would you have one? I do. I, I think if we just treat people with kindness, if we think about that every single day when you encounter people, you never know if you let somebody in front of you in line or don't beep the horn when it takes an extra second when they're getting ready to make a turn and just realize that everybody is having difficult things happening in their lives. Just treat people with a little kindness, smile, and please lock up your cars. <laughs> <laughs> and wear your seatbelts. Wear your seatbelts. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Click it or ticket. That's right. <laughs> but do lock up your cars and your houses. Just be be yes. prudent. Yeah, be aware of your surroundings, judgment. all those you know, those kind of things. But I, I will tell you, that, that's a big thing is, you know, be aware of where you are and who you're with and who's around. And then report things to us. If you see something suspicious or you something doesn't make you feel comfortable, mm-hmm. the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you can't really uh, decide why – call us we will respond don't we, that's our job and we're happy to do that don't hesitate because it could be something that's right and it could be somebody you know or love that 
could use that help. That's right. And that awareness. Exactly. Well, thanks for being with us. And to all of you out there, thanks for listening. And we're going to say goodbye from Entertain You for this episode, but tune in again soon. Thanks for being out there. Bye for now. I want to thank you for listening. I'm Jeannie Corcoran, your Sarasota County, Florida Film Commissioner. And if you want to get a hold of me, you can go to www.filmsarasota.com. Or you can call us toll-free from wherever you are at 888-765-5777, extension 104. We're easy to get a hold of. And we like email. You can email us at info at com, And we check all of our email. If you don't hear back from us right away, it's not that we haven't gotten it, but we might have a computer glitch. Uh, I hate to admit it, but it happens a lot. We've had emails that disappear for a month. We've had phone messages that disappear for two months, but they show up eventually. So we will get a hold of you. Or you can get a hold of us, ask us questions, and if we can help you, we will. And if we can't, maybe we can steer you in a good direction to somebody who will help you. And that's it for me. I'm Jeannie Corcoran, and you've been listening to entertain you on the Radio Ear Network, and this is the Society Bites Network of Programs. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again soon.